We're going to showcase our Tomodachi Generation talent. Now, Tomodachi Generation refers to the more than 10,000 alumni from our youth leadership programs held in partnership with the U.S. Embassy in Tokyo since the 2001 Great East Japan earthquake. Um, it also encompasses alumni of our Toshizo Watanabe leadership and visitation programs, and it even includes the many interns, the volunteers, the family members, and others who have since become part of the council. Now, the council's really intentional about integrating this younger generation into our programs and activities, so our more seasoned members, I like that word seasoned, um, can mentor and support the next generation, and so that the younger cohort can in turn share their experiences with, with us, the older ones. And it, it's sort of like reverse mentoring in a way. And this cross-generational cooperation and mentorship is one of the special aspects that really distinguishes the USJC from many other US-Japan organizations. And so let's start with a message from one of our USJC's wonderful interns. And I, I know her personally, so I'm gonna say make that superstar uh, intern. Um, we've given her the title senior intern uh, as a result. Her name is Haruka Kokaze. And she'll, she'll talk about the impact uh, that we can make through empowering our young leaders. And when you hear her, you'll feel empowered and inspired yourself. I guarantee it because I know her. Haruka. Good afternoon. My name is Haruka Kokaze, and I'm a graduate student at New York University studying counseling for mental health and wellness. And I have had a privilege of interning as a senior development intern at USJC for the past three years. I began my internship back in sophomore in college, thanks to my former supervisor, Laura Winthrop. I would never have dreamed back then that I'll be standing here today sharing how USJC has profoundly transformed my life for the better. I want to start by telling y'all, yes, I spent some time in the South, <laughs> a little bit about myself. I was born in Hyogo in Western Japan, and I hopscotched between Tokyo, New York, and yes, Houston, y'all, and London because of my father's assignments. Living and adopting to such diverse cities has allowed me to witness firsthand the challenges faced by non-Western populations when it comes to mainstream mental practices and resources. It was through my personal interaction with over 300 USJC members, sponsors, and their colleagues and spouses that I became acutely aware of the growing need for bilingual and transnational mental health professional in the US, experts who can not only communicate, but understand the challenges of adapting to American culture and Japanese cultural nuances. Recognizing this potential mental health crisis in our community, I became highly dedicated in incorporating my unique background to become a transnational bilingual psychologist advocating on behalf of Japanese and Japanese Americans to provide mental health care that is culturally relevant. Within the USJC, I've closely collaborated with council leader Gerald Hane to execute events to foster dialogue and understanding on mental wellness issues to strengthen a bilateral relationship, including leadership and mental wellness breakout session at last year's conference in Tokyo, and leadership addressing anti-Asian hate breakout session earlier today. Additionally, USJC has facilitated high-level partnership, including the one with council leader Kenji Furushiro and Persona North America. Together, we publish Japanese article on mental health for Japanese expatriates in the US. And most recently, council leader Kathleen Pike and I worked on a peer-reviewed manuscript exploring a global overview of eating disorders, and this became my first, first author publication. <laughs> A 
explain the full extent of how USJC enables student interns like myself to create opportunities that don't exist will take days. However, what continually motivates me to extend my internship now more than five times is the fact that USJC has given me a beautiful chosen family. Three years ago, transitioning from Texas to New York without my parents during pandemic was a challenging chapter in my life, particularly in the light of rising anti-Asian hate. There were several times where I contemplated returning back to Japan, even if it meant letting go of my dream of building my career here. However, USJC community stood by my side. USJC members and staff helped me discover my inner strength, continuing to take the time to mentor me and inspiring me to persist in the pursuit of my dream. Every day, I'm extremely grateful to have support from countless Japanese and Japanese American leaders who were there for me when I couldn't do it alone. My supervisor, Fred Katayama, and council leaders, Gary Moriwaki, Julie Azuma, and Bill Imada even came to my college graduation when I found out none of my family members could be there. And Fred and Gary even offered to come to my rescue when I first to moved to Manhattan from Brooklyn because there was a huge bug in my sink and I was mortified. <laughs> but seriously, USJC has not only provided me with academic and professional opportunities, but also given me a beautiful second family and those who I call dear friends and colleagues. And without them, I would not be standing here today. It is truly a privilege to be part of this incredible community that so supports and invests in the next generation. Whether one is a promising emerging leader, a program alumnus, a scholarship recipient, or even an intern, USJC is a home for everyone who aspire to find a meaning and purpose within a core network of diverse leaders who endeavor to strengthen the US-Japan relationship. So it is because of y'all out there, the founding leadership and staff, members who tirelessly support USJC's activities, sponsors and donors whose gracious fund make everything possible, and many friends of the council that we are able to find this place where our growth is nurtured and our potential can be realized. And because of that, I seize opportunity to pay it forward when I can. One day, I hope to become successful enough to have the honor of contributing to USJC as a leader, potentially as a sponsor. And you can tell I was a development intern. <laughs> My journey underscores the impact of mentorship, cross-generational cooperation, and their profound impact on USJC's next generation. I'm looking forward to hearing more such experiences from the speakers in the next dialogue. Thank you. Oh, we're so proud of, uh, of, of Haruka, wow. Comes a sponsor, I'm willing to kill all the bugs in her apartment. She, um, no, she really is an inspiration and proof that the future of the US Japan Alliance will be stronger uh, than ever. And where else are you going to hear an intern speak before a crowd of 500, 600 people? Um, she really is uh, someone that uh, is dear to us, and we're proud of her. Next, uh, we have a panel of members from the Tomodachi Alumni Program. Uh, it'll be moderated by Laura Sheehan. She is a career coach and strategist. Now, Laura has served as a mentor of our Tomodachi MetLife Women's Leadership Program, and we're grateful to all our volunteer mentors for Tomodachi and USJC's other leadership programs. So, Laura, over to you and your panel.
Thank you, Fred. I don't know where you disappeared, but I appreciate the great introduction. Um, my name is Laura Sheehan, and like Fred said, I am a former mentor for the Tomodachi MetLife Women's Leadership Program. What an honor that was. And after many of my own twists and turns on my career path, I am right now serving as the Associate Director for Career Services at Georgetown University's Walsh School of Foreign Service. That is always a mouthful. Wow. But my focus is to help the next generation of international affairs professionals launch their careers. So this is my jam. This is where I get the happiest and where I feel the most at home. So thank you for this honor and letting me be here today. Um, our, the title of our panel today is, the, is Empowering the Next Generation, Harnessing Mentorship for Cross-Cultural Collaboration and Connection. This builds beautifully on the lunchtime panel that we heard today, where we heard wonderfully strong messages about um, hope and questions then about the tools that we needed to leverage to help the next generation move forward. Mentorship, of course, being one of the most powerful tools that we can all immediately leverage to empower each other and start moving forward. I have the distinct honor of highlighting these four exceptional young leaders from the USJC and Tomodachi alumni community whose perspectives and ideas will help us all do just that, get inspired and move forward. I would love for each of you to introduce yourselves today. Eiko, please begin. Thank you. I'm happy to be here with all of you today. I'm part, of the, I'm part of the USJC Emerging Leaders Program, class of 2020, so the COVID class. Um, and I've also, <laughs> yes, woo! And I've also been part of the ELP Steering Committee for the past three years. Um, and the goal of the Emerging Leaders Program is to support the next generation of Japanese American leaders. Um, and so it's been such a wonderful experience being part of that. I'm also part of the Tomodachi program. So back in 2012 and 2013, I was the camp director for the summer SoftBank leadership program um, at UC Berkeley. And I had the opportunity to work with over 400 incredible young people from Japan who were affected by the Great East Tsunami. Um, and so Tomodachi is another program that's really close to my heart. Um, and you know, currently, I work at Schmidt Futures. I'm based in New York City. I work at a philanthropic initiative of ex-Google CEO Eric Schmidt. Um, and so I work on the program called RISE. And RISE invests and finds young people who need opportunity and supports them for life as they serve others. So um, you know, today, in terms of this panel, my perspective I'm going to be sharing is going to be how I was mentored as a Japanese American living in the United States. Thank you, Eiko. Thank you. Taiki. Hello, everyone. I am Taiki Yamamoto. I participated in the Tomodachi Sumitomo Corporation Scholarship Program last year, where I had a great opportunity to study abroad at the College of William and Mary as an exchange student. I am a rising senior of the Faculty of Economics at Keio University in Tokyo, but currently I am taking a semester off from school and doing two internships in the United States. The first one is Kizuna Across Cultures, uh, CAC. We provide international experiences to high school students online. And the other one is JCIE, Japan Center for International Exchange. Actually, we had a breakout session yesterday. And thank you so much for those who came to the event. Uh, but JCIE, we aim to strengthen the foundation of <coughs> Japan-US relationship and deepen the international cooperation by sponsoring policy dialogue and connecting non-profit organizations from both countries. Thank you. Thank you. Yukina. Konnichiwa. Hello, my name is Yukina Chiba. My relation with USJC was the Tomodachi STEM at Rice University program in 2019, where Japanese female students in STEM, just like myself, had the opportunity to conduct research internship at Rice University. Currently, I am a PhD student at the Rockefeller University conducting neurobiology research. I also really care a lot about my community, so I became the first Japanese student representative at my university. Today, I would like to utilize my higher education experiences from both Japan and the US to talk about peer mentorship and how we can integrate them to synergize the effect of mentorship. Thank you. And Leona. 
Hello, my name is Leona Izuka. I am a two-time Toshizo Watanabe Study Abroad program, program participant. This program helps both American and Japanese college students who are interested in studying abroad. Currently, I'm a junior at Vanderbilt University studying economics and business. I'm studying economics because I truly believe that economy has a huge impact on people's lives. And thus, I want to recreate a stronger ecosystem to better help female entrepreneurs' social advancement in Japan and beyond. Today, I would like to talk about a very personal mentor who inspired the goal of mine. Thank you. And Leona, of course, that leads us right into our first question. If you all could tell us about your mentors. And Taiki, we're going to begin with you. Thank you, Laura. Um, my story is not that of a typical mentor, but about definitely someone who had a huge impact on my life and also a decision to stay in the U.S. right now. And that person is Mr. Fred Katayama, who is doing a great job as an MC tonight. <laughs> Sorry, I, I can't find him, but um, as a mentor, he gave me a guidance and a courage to challenge myself. In the Tomodachi Sumitomo Corporation Scholarship Program, we have this training called the East Coast Training, and that's where I met him last March. This program offers a great opportunity to scholars to go to New York City and Washington, D.C. to create meaningful connection with the amazing leaders who are striving to create better and deeper U.S.-Japan relationship. And Mr. Katayama was definitely one of them, and we were honored to have him as a guest speaker. As a former journalist, he shared his insights of what Japan could learn from the US, and that's why people-to-people -people connection even matters, uh, matters even more nowadays. But what was the most memorable to me was when he said, be comfortable with being uncomfortable, because that's the risk worth taking, and that's where innovation happens. <clears throat> that was really impactful on me at that time. Because back then, I was debating with myself if I should do a common Japan shukatsu, the typical job hunt, or stay in the US and do internships. Working in the US has been one of my biggest career goals since childhood. But as someone who was born and raised in Japan, that's a challenge and that is a risk. But Mr. Katayama's words gave me clarity of what I want to do and what I should do. So that's why I stay, uh, stayed in the US, and now I'm doing a two internship at the amazing organizations. I think my story, it is a great example of how a simple conversation or just a words can be a guidance. Mentors allow us to reflect on our own story and give, me, give us a perspective. And in my case, that was Mr. Katayama's words, that allow me to reflect on my story and give me courage to step outside of my comfort zone. Thank you so much, Taiki. I love the concept of being comfortable with being uncomfortable. And having met Fred just a couple of times over the last few days, I'd also say that it's really impactful, the impression that you can have just in a few moments, and how probably also having a great sense of humor and a presence all the time is another great thing to take away from, from Mr. Takiyama. Leona, let's move over to you. You have a really interesting mentor, also someone who has taken great risks in her life and has helped you step outside of your comfort zone. Can you tell us about her? Sure, Laura. Um, so I'm very proud to call my mother a mentor. I imagine those who are here today at this conference have left their parents' house a while ago and trying their best to contribute to the future of U.S.-Japan relationship. However, we, forget, we tend to forget that our very mother could be our mentor. I was born in New York, and I moved to Tokyo, Japan, following my parents' divorce when I was five years old. So I spent a lot of my time with her, and I always felt that I, felt that I was dependent on her. Only after I came to the States by myself, at the same age that my mother did, 
did I start seeing my mother as my mentor. Why? Because navigating life in a new environment can be very challenging. And I needed someone who knows me well and who I can rely on whenever I need some advice on personal and professional life. I am now working hard to receive a Bachelor of Arts in Economics, and I will be the first in my family to receive a college degree. I always seek my mother's advice, and I still think her advice is best, most crucial to me and to my academic career. In a sense, I'm following my mother's footsteps by trying out my skills on my own and greatly admire her endeavor and great success as a female entrepreneur who started her own business in Japan. Now, I aspire to transform the Japanese ecosystem to help female entrepreneurs who start their own businesses. Growing up with a single mother has not been easy, and I never thought I would share this part of my identity with this many people here today. However, I was inspired by Mr. Watanabe, who shared his life story growing up with a single mother at this conference last year. And he has opened so many doors and windows to young leaders who have been disadvantaged, like my mother and myself. I received a lot of financial support and other forms of support from the people I met the USJC and the Watanabe Scholarship Program. And I hope to pay this forward by pursuing my goal. Thank you, Leona. Your story really resonates with me about the power, the influence that the women in our lives can have on our professional paths. It's also really important to acknowledge and thank you for your vulnerability and your courage in, in sharing your personal story in front of this small group of people today. Um, Eiko, continuing on the kind of theme of a mentor being both personal and professional, mm -hmm. would you please share with us your story? Yes, absolutely, happy to. Um, so actually, a year ago, I was invited to participate in the USJC mentorship program and it couldn't have come at a better time in my life. Um, I was actually in my third trimester, first time mom-to-be, um, and it's actually full circle now because I'm actually expecting number two. And so it's just, it makes me think about that moment and how valuable having a mentor was. And many people in the audience might know her. Her name is Jill Nishi. She's a former USJC board member. Um, she is the CEO of Philanthropy Northwest. She, is, she was the director and chief of staff at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So extraordinary person, extraordinary human. And because USJC connected me with her, we were able to talk so much um, about how I can balance my career as, and becoming a mother and balancing motherhood at the same time. And so she was just a great uh, support system, sounding board, thought partner. Um, and I think I just had a lot of anxieties about how I could balance all of this. And, you know, she told me, and I'll always remember, like, give yourself grace during this time. And I think I needed to hear that as someone who tends to be really hard on themselves. And so I, I, that really resonates with me as, you know, we have so many different responsibilities and we're pulled in so many different directions. But to give ourselves grace, um, and that's okay, and, and you should do that. So that's been really powerful for me. And she also said that as becoming a mother, you learn a lot of leadership lessons. You learn a lot about setting boundaries. You learn a lot about empathy, patience. And these are all things that I could bring into the workforce and hopefully be a better employee, a better friend, um, a better community member. Um, we also talk a lot about you know, working in corporate America and not seeing a lot of representation in, in terms of Japanese American women leaders. Um, and seeing, see, uh, seeing Jill excel in her role is just so inspiring because you know, sometimes seeing is believing. And I think that you know, she, seeing her makes me want to power through and, and overcome these different obstacles in the corporate setting, especially you know, living and working in New York. It can be you know, really difficult at times. So you know, seeing her has been a great inspiration and, and great timing as well. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. So all of our stories so far have talked about watching other people go through challenges and getting their guidance in navigating those challenges as we face them. Yukina, sometimes we need to seek out advice and companionship, um, camaraderie from our peers. Could you tell us about your great experience with peer mentorship? Sure. So my mentor is Natsumi Komatsu. She's actually the alum of the same Tomodachi program as, as, as me, the, uh, the Tomodachi STEM at Rice University program, but a few years ahead of me. Some of you might actually remember her as the alumni speaker of the 2019 annual conference. So it really means a lot for me to be standing on this stage as, as she did. So our relationship began as a senpai kohai relationship because she participated in the program before me and she's older than I am. So the relationship was more of a top-down structure where I, where I asked for advice and the answers that I usually get were specific steps to reach my goals. But eventually, our relationship developed further into peer mentorship. The significant factor of this relationship is the many challenges both Natsumi and I had to overcome in order to pursue a PhD in the US. I cannot emphasize enough about the lack of Japanese women in STEM and of those who pursue a PhD in the US. And on top of that, we have cultural and language barriers that we have to overcome. So naturally, we bonded over these challenges. Initially, I never really imagined myself pursuing an academic career in Japan. I thought I would get, get a bachelor's degree and get a job somewhere. But when I saw graduate students, including Natsumi, really enjoying the process of discoveries and pursuing further education, it allowed me to see a potential path forward. And Natsumi allowed me to believe in that path and walk that path as a Japanese woman in STEM. So in short, Natsumi creates a safe space for me to gain confidence and believe in myself. And I believe that is the power of peer mentorship. Thank you, Yukina. And of course, your wonderful message leads us directly into our next question. And I would love for you to start us off to talk about the similarities and differences between the, what we call a mentor in the United States and what you call a senpai in Japan. Right. Yes. So uh, thank you, Laura. Speaking from my experience, I think that a senpai kohai relationship is to provide guidance by a person who is older or more experienced to a, to, than a mentee. So it, tends, it oftentimes becomes more of a unidirectional relationship. In comparison, in the US, mentorship is more about providing encouragements so that the mentee can believe in what they want to pursue. So going back to my stories with Natsumi, when I first approached her, we started off as more of a, a senpai kohai relationship because she knew more about the US. So I asked guidance on how to talk to professors in the, uh, in the US, how to write professional emails in English, and how to network in conferences. But as our relationship further developed into peer mentorship, it became more about sharing concerns and overcoming them together. So currently, I actually have monthly Zoom calls with Natsumi, and as Japanese women who are trying to break molds, many molds, the Zoom call serves as a place for us to remind ourselves that we are good enough as who we are. And this sort of bi-directional relationship is, I think, really is only possible with mentorship. Thank you. Taiki and then Leona, if you would please add your thoughts on the similarities and differences between the mentorship and the senpai kohai relationships. Sure. Um, I agree with you, Yukina, on what you said about the differences between Japanese mentorship, senpai, and J American mentorship. I would say American mentorship style focuses more on showing different perspectives and clarifying mentees' mind to let them see what kind of potentials, what kind of possibility they have within themselves. I think my story with Mr. Katayama would be a great example for that. It can be a words of wisdom, a simple conversation, and it gives you a clarity. On the other hand, in Japanese senpai kohai relationship, we tend to ask more for navigation. And what I mean by navigation is step-by-step -step advice on how to realize your goal. So in my case, thanks to Mr. Katayama's words, I decided to stay in the US, right? But that means I have to get a job offer to be an actually an intern. 
I'm embarrassed to admit this in front of this many people, but I knew nothing about American job hunt and processes. But that's when my senpai Japanese mentor was there for me in the Tomodachi Sumitomo Scholarship Program. The scholars get assigned to a mentor from Sumitomo Corporation of Japan, and we can ask for advice, help when we need it. And because my mentor had a great understanding America, of American men, uh, job hunt processes, I asked him for a review of my resume, cover letter, and tips for interviews. He shared amazing hands-on advice, and thanks to him, I was able to get job offers, and here I am, I'm doing amazing, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm doing um, amazing internships at Kizuna Cross Cultures and JCIE. But despite the differences between Japanese and American mentorship style, they both give you a different form of guidance. And mentors allow us to reflect on our own story again. And although, they're, they, although they both serve a different form of guidance, melding these two, we can guide ourselves. We can guide ourselves to the goal that we have. So I can confidently say that I wouldn't be here speaking today if it was not for any mentors or any senpais that I had in my life. Thank you. Miona. Sure. Um, I definitely agree with Yukina and Taiki because I think Jap Japanese senpai kohai relationship is more of like a top-down style than a collaborative one. So when I was kohai at my high school's tennis club, I just followed the directions and did what my senpai told us to. So when I became senpai, I did the same. I directed kohais I was taught, as I was taught to. On the other hand, the impactful mentorship I received is when I'm asked why. Why of my decisions and why of my plans. And this is the kind of mentorship I received from my mother. I remember I pitched to my mother why I wanted to come to the States to enjoy higher education because it could be very costly compared to attending university in Japan. And the reason why I wanted to transfer universities in the States from Boston to Nashville. I believe by explaining why I was able to make my goals clearer and become confident in my own choice. However, not following someone's words or the path that someone told you to follow can be very intimidating because at some point you'll realize that you're the one who's leading your life and no one else. And because of that, you have to take responsibility in your everyday decisions. But I'm lucky enough to have my mother by my side who has who have a similar path and sends me love and cares from a thousand of miles away. Thank you, Leona. So building on the concept of multi-generational, let's just say mentorship, Eiko, I would love to hear your perspective on being a second generation Japanese American and what kind of impact it had on you yes. to have a mentor that spanned both cultures. It's been so instrumental. And I think it's been really identity affirming as well. I think it really inspired me to you know, explore my own identity as a Nisei Japanese American growing up in Los Angeles, California, and now in New York. Um, and, you know, Jill shared a lot of personal stories. She told me that she's a Yonsei, fourth generation, and that um, her mother and her father were both in the internment camps mm -hmm. during World War II. Um, and she just showed a lot of vulnerability. Um, but when she told me that story, I could see how that formative experience has shaped her career and her current path in life as a champion of civil rights, as a public servant, um, as someone who you know, advocates for those who are marginalized. You know, she is a champion of all of those things, you know, racial and economic equity ex and all of that. So you know, it made me think about through the mentorship program, like, what is my personal history and how does that inspire me and how did that shape me to be who I am today and how does that impact the work that I pursue. Um, and then I realized that, you know, on one hand, I went to Asahi Gakuen, Japanese school, 
and um, I was I'm part of ELP, and these are really identity affirming places where I feel a strong sense of belonging. You know, but on the other hand, I've had a lot of experiences of just being the only or the other, feeling alienated in some spaces, and so I think these ex this bicultural, this bi experience has really, I think, shaped me to figure out, you know, I really want to be a champion of, you know, inclusiveness, um, and really advocating for those that might feel like they're not included, and so how do I foster that sense of belonging? So that's been a really powerful, I think, realization through the mentorship program. And another thing that Jill and I often talk about is cultural dissonance. So working in a corporate setting, you know, we're going through a promotion period right now, and you know, I think a lot about the values that I was taught when I was younger. You know, my parents always told me about like humility and deference. Um, you know, don't ruffle any feathers. And then in the meantime, in the corporate setting. I found that there was such a conflict with how I was raised and the values um, and how things were conducted in the workplace. Um, and so, you know, thinking about like how can I, you know, use the experiences that I've had as a JA and what we learned, what we talked about is that it doesn't have to be binary. I could still have my Japanese values, behaviors, experiences, and still own the successes um, that I've had in my career. So, it doesn't have to be black or white, either or, and I think that's been like a powerful mind shift change um, for myself, and I thank Jill for that. Perfect segue again. <laughs> it's as if I prompted these things. Um, into, you've had great experiences so far. Mm -hmm. How can we make it better? How can yeah. we take this next mm -hmm. generation of mentors, all of these wonderful people here who are happy to help, excited to help, mm -hmm. and the next generation of leaders who are looking to get that help, how can we improve the mentorship system and be better mentors, better mentees moving forward? Leona, I would love to start with your perspective. Sure. So, as I said, I grew up in an extremely female-dominated dominated environment. What I mean by this is I grew up with my mother and grandmother and I attended an all-girls high school in Japan. And I felt empowered to navigate my life and to find my space in what's called, what's it called, um, what's called male-dominant society. Because I have my role models who have gone through a lot of challenges and overcame, overcame them. So I think finding those who have similar path or common interests can be very beneficial for both mentors and mentees. Seeking those who are passionate about bettering the future and contributing to the future of U.S.-Japan relationship, I was able to find this innovative and supportive community here at the U.S.J.C. When I attended the Watanabe Scholarship Leadership Weekend, Mr. Watanabe emphasized the importance of saying your dreams out loud, whether it's big or small. At first, I doubted that this will make any changes, and I was hesitant to do so because I thought my goals or dreams were not great enough to be heard. Last year, I wanted to work at a startup, and I kind of said it aloud. I told my peers and professors that I wanted to work at a tech startup, and it worked out at the end. I connected with the CEO of a tech startup, and I was lucky enough to work with her over the summer. And I'm sure that this will keep happening as, a, as long as I keep my goals clear and share them with people around myself. And in fact, I'm here sharing my goals with this many people here today who might be my future mentors and mentees. What I would like to emphasize here is that who you would like to have as a mentor can, is really up to you, and finding a right person can have a huge impact on your life. Thank you so much, Leona. It's so important. I want to underscore that point, too, that you're making about clarifying your goals and making sure that you articulate them so that when you're asking for help, people know exactly how they can give you that help. And the choice of mentors is always yours. I think that's so powerful. Um, Yukina would love to get your thoughts on how to improve the mentorship relationship. What else do you think we could add to the system? Sure. So speaking from my experience, I think senpai-kohai relationship uh, starts 
with a difference in age and level of experience. So this clear top-down structure makes sure that everyone is part of the senpai kohai chain. In comparison, in the US, mentorship uh, starts more spontaneously because it is more about sharing similar perspectives and experiences. So ultimately, I think the best model for mentorship is the combination of senpai kohai and mentor-mentee relationship, where everyone is part of the mentorship circle with an ongaishi mindset. Ongaishi is a Japanese term for paying it back. I really do hope that someday I will be able to pay it back to Natsumi, but until then, I am paying it forward to the next generations of female Jap Japanese female students in STEM to support, encourage, and mentor them so that they can step out of their comfort zone, whether that is to pursue a PhD in the US, just, my, just like myself, or lead industries in Japan. I strongly believe that the mindset of ongaishi, paying it back, paying it forward, is really essential in further developing the next generations of the US and Japan. Thank you so much, Yukina. Paying it back and paying it forward, so important. And Taiki, you have some very specific ideas on how to expand our connection and our ability to reach out. Yes, so I love your idea, Yukina, of everyone being a part of this big mentorship circle with that ongaishi, pay for, pay back mindset. In terms of that, I really see the potential in the online platforms to create a um, sustainable ecosystem of a mentorship. And what I mean by online platforms is where mentees and mentors can connect with each other, talk with each other without any physical barriers. I got this idea when I started interacting with um, high school students through Kizuna Across Cultures work. So like I mentioned briefly earlier, Kizuna Across Cultures, we provide international opportunities and facilitate um, bicultural exchange among students from various regions of the US and Japan who would otherwise have limited access of um, international opportunities like this. One day, this student from Japan, she told me that she didn't know anything about the US until she joined the program. And seeing me, who did a study abroad in the US as a Japanese person, made her curious about doing an exchange program in the future. This made me extremely happy because it made me feel like I was doing uh, ongaishi, pay it back and pay it forward, like Yukina said. But at the same time, this made me realize if it was not for this international opportunity that she had, she couldn't know about all these things. She couldn't discover this interest that she newly found out. And international opportunities like study abroad, exchange program, these initiatives are not accessible to everyone. And I struggle with the same thing in high school. I think this applies to mentorship as well. Although all of us, everyone needs some form of mentorship in our life to grow as a person, there is still a huge disparity of mentorship accessibility. I believe that maintaining the circle of mentorship is a key thing for our future. And online platforms like this makes it possible by overcoming a lot of various <coughs> barriers like physical, financial, generational, temporal, and others. That's why I believe that such um, online initiatives should be more encouraged along with the in-person platforms that we do have now. Thank you, Taiki. Eiko, what are your thoughts on how this group might be able to move us forward? Yes, great. And building off Taiki's point about accessibility, you know, here we have such a critical mass of experts, people who have incredible knowledge, um, you know, and also have such a generous spirit of wanting to invest in the next generation of leaders. And so I think about this critical mass, and then I think about the critical mass of people who want mentorship or want guidance, but often don't know where to start. And so my experience of being invited to a mentorship program, the USJC mentorship program, I was part of um, eight matches, and I think there is a huge opportunity to scale that so that more people can benefit from the mentorship like we've all benefited as well. 
Um, and so I think about, you know, how can organizations, corporations or that you're part of, you know, build up a mentorship program if it doesn't exist yet? Um, in the previous panel, I learned about like a mentorship program at EY. I think there's a lot of ways to learn about um, organizations that are doing the mentoring already and learn and exchange best practices. Um, and so I thank USJC for inviting me to be part of this. Um, and I also think about um, some of the messages we've heard about the value of cross-generational collaboration. And in my current role at Schmidt Futures and Rise, I get to work with so many phenomenal Gen Z students who are 15 to 17 year olds, and I find that I'm mentored by them as well. Um, it might seem a little non-traditional, but seeing how passionate they are about social issues, how they want to use their voice, not be, and be more fearless, like I'm learning from them as much. And we want to make sure that we include those youth voices anytime we design any type of program and making sure that we're soliciting feedback, we're hearing what they have to say, um, and so that it, it really increases engagement as well um, with the young people. So, you know, there's so much knowledge in this group, and I'm sure that we can scale this mentorship program from eight and beyond. Thank you, Eiko. Actually, on that note, a, um, an idea, a challenge that I've heard from a few people during the course of this conference is keeping track of people after they graduate from the programs, how we make sure that they come back to the programs and that they keep us in touch and keep us enlightened with what they're doing. So if anyone out here has any ideas, please talk to Kearo right over here. She needs to know this so that we can all pull everybody together and expand, build the platform out and make sure that we are really keeping our finger on the pulse of what all of our Tomodachi alum are doing at all times so that we can continue to pay it back and pay it forward. Okay, we are now heading into our lightning round. One thing from each one of you to close it all up, to leave with parting thoughts. Taiki, let's start with you. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, Lola, for being an amazing moderator. And thank you, everyone, for listening to our stories tonight. My message might be directed to other students here or other peers who might be watching this online, but there is always someone who can help you out when you need it. So please don't feel stuck by yourself. And I'm very hopeful that we can create accessible, inclusive, and sustainable ecosystem of mentorship. And tonight, this panel discussion was a very proof of that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yukina. Sure. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the USJC for providing me with the opportunity to share my experiences and thoughts. And of course, uh, Tomodachi Initiative for providing me with the experience of research internship in the US. Without, the, without that experience, I wouldn't be pursuing a PhD in the US and you know, standing on the stage. And of course, the audience and fellow panelists for hearing my thoughts. So to answer your question, I think any sort of person-to-person -person relationship, whether that is mentor-mentee or senpai kohai relationship, I think the most essential thing is to express your true self. So I would like to conclude with a phrase that a mentor in Japan told me when I was having imposter syndrome, which is just be yourself because you're already great as who you are. Thank you, Yukina. Eiko. Um, I think prior to participating in the USJC mentorship program, I knew what mentorship was, but I think what I learned was what great mentorship is. And great mentorship is not transactional, it's actually a very empowering relationship. Um, another characteristic of great mentorship is that it's mutually beneficial. And so, you know, I think that we've been able to support each other. Um, both parties are able to benefit from the experience. Thank you, Echo. Leona, take us home. Sure. Speaking at this panel has made it clear to me that USJC has been and continues to be the place where people connect with each other. And I'm so grateful that I'm part of this community. And I hope to pay this forward to the next generation. Thank you. And sorry. Oh. A huge <laughs> thanks to my mother, my very first mentor, who opened the doors for me. Not to mention Mr. Watanabe, who's made my study abroad experiences possible, and Ms. Masami Tyson, who welcomed me into Nashville. It meant a lot to me, and many more who've supported me through my journey. Thank you. Thank you. So to wrap it all up, be yourself, push yourself, connect, give thanks, 
And I'll add one more on there, and that is be curious, both from the mentor side and from the mentee side. Thank all of you for your wonderful stories, for your perspectives, for your vulnerability, for your courage. Thank all of you for being a part of this great conversation, for continuing this dialogue, for all of us collectively moving this forward, and for being a part of this amazing conference this year. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, for that excellent moderation. And thank you, Eiko, Taiki, Yukine, and uh, uh, Leona, for really being open and sharing your, your personal stories. Um, gosh, I, I'll tell you, I, I was starting to feel emotional. I heard Taiki all of a sudden mention my name. And um, uh, yeah, I was, um, um, I, was, I, I was almost starting to feel guilty um, because I, I don't know if you realize, but I just learned what he said was that he missed purposely decided to skip his shukatsu period in Japan. Shukatsu, for those of you who don't know, is a re corporate recruitment period in Japan at Japanese universities. It's a strict period. If you miss that period, there you know, students who live overseas, if they don't get back there in time for that period, chances are they, their, their chances of working at a major Japanese corporation is it. You have to do it when you graduate that year and hit that period. And when he said he skipped it on account of what uh, I, I guess I said, I thought, wow, I got to find this kid a job. <laughs> but, and then when he went saying that actually he's got a bunch of job leads, though, whew, oh, I was going to tell, say, hey, if you've any, got a job, please hire this guy. But uh, uh, took away from uh, that uh, feeling of guilt. Um, you also heard them talk about the uh, senpai kohai relationship. Senpai in Japanese means senior, kohai is a more junior one. So it's a vertical relationship. And my first encounter is I was, my first weekend in Tokyo, I was in Shibuya. I went to see a Yakushimara Hiroko movie back then. And it was totally popular. So the seats were all sold out. And there's one row, two rows empty. So I went to the empty row. And all of a sudden, this young kid gets up. No, 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 it's reserved. So for who? Uh, my senpai, they're coming here. I've reserved it. So I went to the other row. I said, oh, what about, no, 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 no. This is taken. It's for my senpai. I'm reserving this row. And so I had to go back to the ticket booth, pay another $10, and buy a reserved seat for that. But and that was my encounter with senpai kohai. <laughs> I've got a different <laughs> appreciation for senpai kohai today. Now, you're wondering why I'm saying all this. It's because I was trying to also uh, stretch for these folks to take this stuff away. Um, um, but now that I think it's clear, we good now? All right, okay, so let's move on with the program. So our final uh, next-gen speaker is Yo Sato. She's a certified nurse and emergency department technician from Japan. So Yo, the floor is yours. I always wanted to be someone who can take care of others, but there are lessons that I needed to learn in order to reach my full potential. Hello, I'm an alumni of a Genji Disaster Nursing Program, and I chose a career in nursing. Then I joined Tomodachi 2002. Before joining the program, I always thought that I need to stay passionate, knowledgeable, and be 100% to be able to achieve my dream. However, Tomodachi has taught me, in order for me to be able to take care of others, I needed to make sure that I had two things. One, to know how to take care of, my, to take care of myself, and two, the people-to-people -people connection create a further opportunity for me to pay it forward to expand my reach to help more people. During the Tomodachi JNJ Disaster Nursing Program, I had a chance to interact with a DMAT team member. DMAT stands for Disaster Medical assistant team. They told us that most important thing in the emergency field is your own safety. It is fundamental, yet people tend to forget the most. And this advice has helped me when I had my life-changing experience in the late April this year. I was driving along local road in Virginia. As I was approaching a curve, I heard a boom. I saw the car right in front of me has crashed into another car. 
I saw white smoke coming out of both cars. I saw all the airbags were inflated, and I also smelled oil. I, the next moment, I felt everything went blank. It did not feel real. I feel like I had rushed to a scene to save the people who was in the car. But that's the moment I stopped myself and I remember what the DMAT team has told me. So I follow all the steps. Step one, evaluate if the scene is safe. Step two, make sure myself is calm. And step three, if I have a proper gear to protect myself. As a resort, I was able to triage an injured driver and ask people around me to help calling 911. Later that night, I shared this story to a DMA instructor, and he replies, I was impressed by how calm you were during the training, so I'm sure that you haven't done a great job this time also. And you, your story has helped me and inspired me as well. That's the moment I feel everything was real and everything I have learned, the people that I have connected, has saved someone's life today. And this experience has cemented my goal that emergency management field is where I wanted to be in. The connection that I made with the instructor not only helped me to learn everything about emergency field, but he also became my mentor that he introduced me to his network for me to gain more knowledge and ideas about emergency field, which led me to um, move to United States by myself a couple months ago. It was a big decision for me because I had no one to rely on in the United States. But the people that I met through Tomodachi has helped me challenge myself through unique experience and the solid connection to pursue my passion for f helping others. Tomodachi program inspired me in two ways. One, it taught me how to take care of myself before others, and two, taught me the value of people-to-people -people connection to help me challenge myself and help me grow. As I continue working in the de emergency department at a hospital here in Virginia, I'll take these valuable lessons I learned along with many more and promise to continue pay it forward to help others. I'm grateful for the connection that I have made in Tomodachi, and the program has helped me and led me to where I am today. Thank you.